Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and thank you for making time for us today. Uh, this is a very exciting session. We're theming it around future-proofing enterprise software assets so we can help you accelerate your digital journeys. Uh, we have a couple of very exciting demos uh, and some really cool technology we're going to show on stage today. Uh, along with this, what we want to basically leave you with is a perspective of the depth and breadth that HPE uh, brings to you from a software perspective uh, in terms of how we can aid you on your customer journeys. Uh, to begin with, my name is Mohan. I lead the Esmo software business. Um, and you know, the one theme I wanted to talk about today is the theme that you've seen across the shop floor, right? It's really around AI, right? Every customer conversation in the last 12 months, almost every event we've been to in the last year, year and a half, and almost every customer event we have participated in has revolved around AI and adopting this particular technology to improve business outcomes. Right? We are often asked, is the hype real? Is all of this just mumbo jumbo language that will basically disappear in a couple of years? Answer is actually no. We are strong believers of the fact that AI is technology that's here to stay. Uh, recently, McKinsey did a study where over 73% of the customers interviewed responded that they are prioritizing AI over all of the software investments that they're working on. However, McKinsey, as well as a few other consulting companies, have done multiple studies which show that while there's a lot of interest in this technology, there are few companies that are actually able to adopt this technology and take it to production. Specifically, almost three quarters of enterprises report that their data capabilities cannot keep up with business demands. More interestingly, nine out of 10 projects in the AI, ML, data science spaces actually fail. Right? At HPE, the Esmeral business unit focuses on providing a simple set of foundational capabilities that help our customers simplify their data and tooling journeys so as to future-proof foundations for building out data, AI, and analytics applications. Specifically, when we thought about Esmeral, we wanted to focus on two problems for our customers. The first is we wanted to provide for them an evergreen set of tools backed by the latest, greatest available in the open source community. And we wanted to provide them with all the goodness of, and all the goodness, all the vendor freedom of open source. However, with all the enterprise grade guarantees you may expect from production enterprise grade software. This particular dimension resulted in our creating a product line called Unified Analytics. This product has resonated really well with customers. We'll tell you more about it uh, later today. Complementing Unified Analytics, about a year and a half ago, we kind of took a bold vision where we said, you know, many of our customers are excited about the next generation of applications. However, their biggest stumbling block seems to be access to data. So we took our data fabric product offering and started focusing on how can we help our customers seamlessly access, manage, and govern data in a variety of locations in a single pane of glass of sorts here. So to tell you more about how Data Fabric has actually helped our customers simplify their complex digital transformations, I'd like to bring on stage one of our customers. Stefan leads infrastructure and platforms at Zapka. Hi, Stefan. Welcome to Discover. Do you want to take a minute and tell us about Zapka? OK. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Stefan. I work for Zapka, and I'm responsible for the infrastructure on premises, cloud public, and network as well. So what is Zapka? Zapka is a chain of convenience stores in Poland with over 10,000 locations. Yeah, so we can only imagine about the scale, especially that our company has a strong and innovative approach to customer convenience, including open hours. Our stores are open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's a scale, yeah? So you want to tell us a little bit more about the specific use case. That's a very complex operation. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. At the very heart of Jabka IT system is a SAP software with one of the largest HANA databases, especially in number of transactions. Just to give you a number, 
constant normal workload is about 20,000 SQL queries per second, and we have to be ready for a 10 times larger traffic. Yeah? The unavailability of this software can cause major failures for our logistic process, finance operations, and ultimately for our stores, customers, and franchisees. Yeah? So what was our challenge and how did we solve it? Uh, as you can see, when we decided to stay with our SAP software on premises, the main challenge was how to secure high availability and performance of the system. As you probably know, SAP and, uh, under, under uh, hood relies on a shared file system, but how to secure availability of this crucial element. Yeah, remember the high number of uh, SQL queries, which is about the same as file system transactions. Yeah? Uh, we tried different software and different approach, both open source like DRBD and commercial ones, ServiceGuard. Nothing was able to endure our test workload. So with Golight approaching, HP and our partner proposed maybe we try Esmeral Data Fabric. Yeah? Installation was quite simple, quite quick. In just two days, we were ready to present it to SAP systems and conducted test workload once again. Then, voila, our problems went away. There wasn't any crashes, file logs, or other surprises anymore. Yeah? I know, we are using only a fraction of Esmeral uh, capabilities. Yeah? From my perspective, the core one, stretch file system, very performant. Uh, we are using it for almost two years with year over year growth nearly 30%. Yeah? And four physical nodes with Aletra under hood, it's enough to support performance and stability that our SAP team, team can ask and only and even imagine. Yeah? Yeah. So, Stefan, hearing praise like this from a customer is really, really humbling. So thank you. Thank you. That. One question before you leave, though. What's next? Like, what else are you planning to try? What's next? Uh, that's a very good question. We're also thinking about AI, still using in the public cloud. But you know, public cloud, it's, it's not your data should reside, the most cru crucial, yeah? Yes, yeah, so we're thinking about using Esmeral to leverage uh, our data on premises. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Stefan. And we'd like to be of service to you as well. It's always very flattering and humbling when a customer comes up and is able to like, testify for how we help them solve problems. So when we think about taking a step back and when we think about our portfolio and where we are headed going forward, the last year, year and a half was really about us simplifying the portfolio and providing some foundational building blocks to help our customers start adopting technologies at scale for enterprise, right? The next part of our journey is really about how we want to start innovating, how we want to make our presence felt in the same way as HP is a leader in infrastructure and services. We want HP to reflect those capabilities at the data and the analytics and AI layers as well, right? So we have four big themes that we'll be talking about today, right? The first big theme is an area that is very near and dear to us. It's also very, very relevant, right? As you saw in Antonio's session this morning, you know, NVIDIA is a big partner of ours. GPUs are here to stay. One of the big challenges we see, however, is when you think about GPUs or accelerators in general, everybody is interested in these technologies. However, they are treated as satellite-like outfits of sorts here. So this is where we've been doing some very exciting work in basically creating this concept of a data lake house. Almost think of it as a hybrid data lake house, which expands across heterogeneous accelerators of sorts and stuff. And to tell you more about this, instead of my showing and telling stuff, I'd like to bring on stage one of the industry leaders, a good friend of mine, a White House Presidential Innovation Fellow, as well as the CEO and co-founder of Voltron Data, Josh Patterson. Hey, Josh. Josh, first of all, thank you for making the trip. I don't want to give too much away, but Josh was also one of the founders of the NVIDIA Rapids engine, right? So Josh, you've been talking to everybody about the wall. You want to tell us about the wall and set the context here? 
Absolutely. So the wall is really important to a lot of large scale enterprises. The wall is the inflection point where the next iteration of AI gets prohibitively expensive, not because of the accelerators, not because of the training, but because of the pre-processing time. The pre-processing, the ETL, the feature engineering gets so large, it creates a backlog on AI training and inferencing. And so while over the last decade, we've seen uh, CPU performance and data systems improve by 10x, we've seen AI models increase by 100,000x. We've seen data set size over the last decade increase by 100x for analysis and for machine learning. And on top of all of this, uh, many predict that the AI market is going to 20x uh, by the end of this decade. And these are all compounding effects. And so what we're seeing is AI is getting stifled by pre-processing of data, by ETL, by feature engineering. And so how we're going to get over that wall is innovating in these uh, pipelines, making them faster and more uh, resilient. So you have a very interesting approach you've taken with Voltron. Right? I love the three C's framework. Maybe we talk a little bit more about that. Absolutely. So there's three main things that we do at Voltron Data that are going to help people get over the wall. And it starts with composability, community, and compute. And so I'm going to talk about uh, composability and community first. One of the things is, uh, with composability, people should be able to write code and run it on a myriad of different hardware while keeping their data the same, while keeping a lot of their systems, their end-user systems, uh, intact. And how we do that is through community. IBIS is this really powerful framework that allows people to write code in one simple Python data frame and then run it on a myriad of different backends, whether it's Spark or Presto, BigQuery, or many of the other engines that are seen in uh, HP uh, Esmeralda's unified analytics stack. Having this interoperability and composability allows people to move their code uh, graciously across these systems without rewrites. These rewrites are extremely expensive. They slow down development time. Uh, and again, they just really stifle innovation. So effectively, Josh, the composability story is you write code once, and you can plug in a variety of backends depending on the kind of infrastructure you have, depending on the kind of constraints you have. Absolutely. That's whether awesome. those backends are local, whether those backends are distributed in the cloud, on premise, um, or, as we'll talk about later, on NVIDIA GPUs. So let's show a quick demo of IBIS in action. Sure. And so this is IBIS on uh, Esmeral UA's uh, software stack. And so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly uh, spin up a notebook. Um, and within this notebook, we're going to have uh, some IBIS code. And so just some simple data frame manipulation. If you're a retailer or you know, any other uh, business, you want to analyze your customers, see what they're doing, uh, send in aggregations for different types of BI reporting and what have you. We have this code. We're going to run this code, and then we're going to run it on a Spark backend. This is a small data set size, mainly to keep this moving. And it you know, just queries pretty quickly. Here's the power of IBIS. We're going to take that exact same code, and now we're going to connect it uh, to a Snowflake cluster. And just like that, with no code change, we're going to now run it on Snowflake. We can do this across a myriad of the backends that are in uh, UA, whether this is Trino, whether this is uh, Spark, whether it's you know, really any other engines that you have. IBIS allows people to do this across over 20 different backends so they can really simplify their code their code base, uh, and not rewrite their code as much. Wow, this is a very powerful capability. I can also see how it can be very relevant, especially for customers that are exploring like cloud databases like Snowflake. Absolutely. Very cool. Should we shift gears and go to compute? Compute's my favorite topic. Um, at NVIDIA, I created Rapids. Rapids was a system of accelerator-native libraries that allow people to do data frame processing, machine learning, graph analytics, and many other things. After creating Rapids, I started Voltron Data to take it one step further. We really wanted to simplify how people interacted with hardware uh, and how they can move more and more data uh, processing to different types of accelerators. And so the, the difficulty of Rapids early on was people had to rewrite their code to leverage uh, different types of uh, acceleration in NVIDIA GPUs. We wanted to make this a lot more simple and scale to a lot larger uh, data set sizes and still have the performance that people are expecting uh, out of accelerators. And so with this, we've created Theseus. It's our accelerated native distributed compute engine uh, that runs on NVIDIA GPUs. And so now in, uh, enterprises can run their exact same workloads that we're running on Spark or Trino or Presto or many of the other uh, distributed compute systems 
on uh, NVIDIA GPUs thanks to HP GreenLake and their hybrid cloud experience. Should we get to the demo? Let's do it. Sounds really fascinating. And so uh, this is uh, really straightforward uh, with uh, UA's capabilities. We're just gonna click on Theseus, we're gonna spin up a GPU cluster, um, and because this is all getting managed by GreenLake and this hybrid cloud platform, we don't have to do much uh, provisioning at all. It's, it's very simple uh, to now just take these GPUs and use them for data analytics. Large companies have petabytes of data in their data lakes, and they typically wanna do analysis on terabytes, tens of terabytes, hundreds of terabytes of data to really feed these AI uh, and generative AI models. One of the problems, though, is they're getting stifled uh, by the time it takes to, uh, to run these Spark workloads. So if you can just uh, click one more time, we're gonna show head-to-head, uh, -head, Spark running on, I think, 2,000 plus cores, and then Theseus running on 24 uh, GPUs. And so this is a 10 terabyte query. I'm, I'm just amazed by how easy it was to spin up the GPU clusters. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts of this. Uh, and by the time I get finished talking, the GPU clusters will be done. But it's extremely easy. This is just still running your native Kubernetes. Again, a plug for IBIS. The code doesn't change whatsoever from your CPU systems. You can run IBIS locally. Now on this distributed GPU cluster, and boom, we're done. That was that's, a 10 terabyte query. That's fascinating. It's almost five times faster out of the box, right? It's, Maybe more. It's, it's, it's extremely fast. And now, this was a smaller example, and people are saying 10 terabytes, that's not that small. Let's imagine this was you know, 50 or 100 terabytes. Spark would take hours, if not sometimes days, to do these large-scale queries that are really common when you're trying to do advanced uh, threat detection or anomaly detection, building these fancy recommendation engines. And in that demo, we saw the query finish, interactive data visualization, and then with uh, UA's capabilities, we immediately pass that into a machine learning model to start training. This, is, this is like the whole enchilada, <laughs> everything kind of comes together. It's all coming together, and the beauty of it is, it's done before Spark has even finished the query. Wow. It really allows this interactive human in the loop experience where people can uh, just develop and iterate much faster across a myriad of different models and technologies. I'm actually gonna fast forward this a little bit now. Go for I it, yeah. It's gonna go forever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is this is like really exciting technology, Josh. How and when can our customers get access to this? This is something that we are really excited about. Voltron Data, we've been working with Mohan and his team for a very long time. Uh, this is fully integrated uh, into Esmeral UA, um, and we're excited to have customers starting next year uh, start beta testing our product. Uh, we'll be in our, uh, we'll be actually in their booth um, right after this talking more about uh, Voltron Data, Theseus, and how we integrate all this with HP GreenLake and Esmeral products. Super. I hope we can bring customers on stage next time we're at Discover. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Josh. Thank you again, Mohan. You know, I haven't done speeds and feats in many years now, but that was one of the coolest, like, you know, performance, like, um, demo I've ever seen. And it's also so easy and so composable, it's just mind-blowing. Like, a lot of exciting stuff out there. Shifting gears and going back to the theme of the various areas of product innovation, right? We started off with CPU, GPU optimized data lakes, but there are two or three other areas we wanted to highlight on, right? One of them, and again, this is a very, very important theme for us, is to provide end-to-end -end options for our customers, right? So they are kept up to date with the latest, greatest technology choices that are available out here. The second big theme for us over here really was about how do we help our customers expand their data footprint as well as their data use cases depending on the type of data that they may have of sorts here, right? So tell you more about both of those, I'd like to bring on stage Shriek, who leads product management for our unified analytics portfolio. Thank you, Mohan, hey, thanks again. for having me. Okay, so Josh has set the bar really high. You're at least come close to Josh then, right? I'll try, I'll try my okay. best now. Perfect. <laughs> so Shriek, tell us more about the stuff we should expect here. Yeah, uh, no, uh, first of all, you know, uh, thanks for having me here. It's great to be in Barcelona. Um, so yeah, we've been, we've been in the past year, year and a half, uh, the innovation train is running at HP Esmeral. Uh, we've been talking to hundreds of customers, and we are learning a lot, right? That's what fuels our innovation engine. So we've done a lot, uh, a lot of innovations, but I want to focus on three areas where uh, we're introducing new capabilities, something that touches upon what you guys already talked about, right? 
Um, starting with, I want to start with Esmeral Data Fabric. Right? So we've expanded Data Fabric now to import external targets like S3 or NFS volumes. So if a customer has data outside of Data Fabric, now we can simply attach those volumes and access all of the data from a single location. Or and it all appears in the same namespace. It all appears in the same namespace. You don't have to move the data around, right? So that's but does the data get copied? No, that's the beauty of Data Fabric. So you can access all of the data without necessarily moving them around. Right? Wow. And then we've also um, added iceberg support. As we know that you know, the lakes are getting converted into lake houses now. So an iceberg is one of the popular open table formats. So we've added support for uh, iceberg uh, in, uh, in Data Fabric. And now moving up the stack on the analytics tooling layer, uh, we've deepened our integration with uh, HP MLDE. Uh, as many of you may or may not know, MLDE is one of the uh, uh, popular uh, frameworks for uh, uh, running distributed training of uh, deep learning models as well as large language models, right? So we've integrated them natively on, on Unified Analytics. So we brought both the worlds together, right? And the third area where we've been innovating is that, uh, and obviously when, it, when, when we talk about AI, you said AI uh, is AI hype real. AI is part of every conversation that comes up. And one of the key areas where customers are really interested in is, you know, how do I monitor my AI uh, machine learning models? Right? So we've added um, model observability to our stack, and we've brought in open source um, tooling Ylogs. So we are expanding the open source ecosystem as well. So those are the three areas where we've been innovating. Okay, all of this sounds really cool, but I know you have an exciting demo you want to show us. Yes. Have we shift gears? Yes, let's, uh, let's talk about it. So uh, what we want to talk about here is that uh, everybody talks about generative AI, right? Antonio talked about it. I think it's uh, every customer wants to, uh, uh, wants to talk about it. The challenge for a lot of enterprises is that when they look at generative AI, they want to bring that generative AI experience on premises to run it against their own data, right? But the problem for a lot of enterprises is not that easy. So the goal for HPE AI solutions in Edsboral in particular is that making the generative AI accessible for enterprises. So the demo that I'm going to show we're going to go to a live demonstration. Hopefully, you know, we'll have the network connectivity that will connect We're us. In Frankfurt, we have yes. network issues, so yes. it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed, but uh, we like to live on the edge, right? So we, we'll go to the live demo. So, so what we want to talk about here is that a lot of enterprises are like, you know, uh, when they look at generative AI, the popular use case that comes up is that, hey, how do I bring the large language model and point it at my data? I should be able to simply ask a question in an English language and get the answers. But how does this apply to enterprise? I mean, you, you know, chat GPT is great. That's right. But do you see enterprise customers care about technologies like this? Yes, uh, well, you know, they don't care about the technology as much as the business outcome it delivers, right? And the use cases that we hear from our customers is that support automation, right? The support teams that, uh, that want to understand, and gather all the information from, from customers. They simply want to ask a question and get the insights from, from uh, the- So it's like automating a help desk almost. That's exactly right. That's one of the use cases. So I'm going to show you a, a very simple demo. So we built a LLM chatbot, and Mohan, um, and uh, the demo that I'm going to show, it can be deployed under 20 minutes. Wow, OK. You don't have to take my word for it. I'm going to go to the live demo and okay. show it to you. Let's see how it works. Yeah. OK. And hopefully so the network connection is OK this time. I, let's uh, let's uh, pray to the demo gods now, right? <laughs> so all right. So, so what you're seeing here is that uh, we built a very simple LLM chatbot. And for this demo, we are using Open Foundation model uh, uh, from Hugging Face, right? So this is a pre-trained model that you can uh, you know, get it from Hugging Face or other model repositories. We pulled one down from Hugging Face. It works great. So what this chatbot does is I can ask a very simple question to this chatbot, and it goes and you know, um, retrieves the answer, right? So let me ask a very simple question and see what it does. So we talked about Lake House, uh, Iceberg and Lake, lake House. So let me ask this question and see what uh, the chatbot does. So um, obviously it is now uh, uh, interpreting my um, Is my this question. running on CPUs or GPUs? This is running on a very limited set of GPUs. Okay. Yeah. So it came back with the response. Let's see how it responded to my question. And obviously, you know, um, it responded by saying that Lakehouse is a data management architecture, which seems to be the right response, uh, because that's the context that I had in mind. Um, and let's take a quick look at you know, how we made this possible, because it all looks very simple, right? This looks like a chat GPT for enterprise, but let me take a moment to kind of you know, walk you through how we actually pulled all of this stack together, right? 
So here is, here is the, uh, here is the uh, simple architecture. It looks very simple, but you know, a lot of things have to come together. And that's the beauty of Esmeral Unified Analytics. We do all the hard work and heavy lifting for you. So you get to enjoy the experience that I just showed you, right? So, so here, what, me all the components you needed to build out the demo were part of Unified Analytics. That's already. exactly right, Mohan. So we brought all those pieces together and, and we completely integrated and automate the, automated the whole thing. So end user can simply enjoy the experience of interacting with LLMs. Interesting. You want to walk us through this a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the first things first, right? Enterprises have gathered a lot of proprietary information that they have in data warehouses, data lakes, and what have you. And you simply load up that information. The first step is you need to extract that information and load it into a vector database. And what this really means is that you are, you are essentially taking all the content that enterprises have and sort of grouping them based on the meaning. Right? For example, lake houses, iceberg, and all of these information gets grouped together. So when you simply ask a question like I did, um, the query comes, the, uh, hits the large language model, then what the large language model does is it goes, retrieves the right context from the vector database and gives you the best fit response. Right? So that's what is happening here. Now, if I had posted a question without having this context, the LLM would have responded by saying, I don't know the answer because I've not been trained on that data. Or worse, it could have acted like a, an old uncle in a family re reunion, come back with some made up answer, right? It's like that's what some people call as hallucination. You make things up when you don't know the answer. So that's what happens. So having the right context improves the accuracy. And where was all the data stored? So the data, uh, the data that we fed into Vector Database all was stored on Data Lake on Esmeral Data Fabric. Got it, okay. So, so next, what I want to do is, um, I also want to talk about uh, different scenarios here, right? The, uh, the basic thing, when most organizations are dabbling with large language model, the easiest way to get started is, take a foundation model that's been pre-trained, bring it in, and, and just add your enterprise context, and, and, and off you go, right? And as enterprises mature, they look at optimizing these models, maybe for the domains that they are in, right? Uh, maybe healthcare domain, finance domain. You, want a you don't want a language model to know everything about the entire world. They want to optimize it for the business case that they, they are interested in. So this is where you know, uh, the fine tuning of model uh, uh, comes in, where you take a model, la generic model, and fine tune it to the use case that you're interested in. And we can do that very easily, and this is where the integration of HP machine learning development environment determined with unified analytics, we give you all the tools to take a generic model and fine tune it to suit your business needs, right? And then uh, the third scenario where, you know, we also see a lot of customers is that sophisticated customers, they want to build their own custom uh, large language models, and they want to be able to, um, you know, take uh, the data sets and sort of like, you know, build a large language model from scratch, right? And there are a lot of AI tools and frameworks that are available in the market. And one of the popular tools, and you probably saw in Antonio's keynote as well, NVIDIA. NVIDIA has uh, AI um, enterprise, which is one of the popular tools that helps sort of build the model, train the model, and operationalize, deploy those models. And we've simplified the, the, the whole process so that you can take the NVIDIA AI framework and land it on Unified Analytics. And I'm wow. gonna show you a demo how we bring both the worlds together. Okay, but before you go to NVIDIA, you're telling me machine learning development environment yep. is embedded in Unified Analytics now? Are customers? Yeah, so. Both of them? Yeah, so that's a great question, Mohan. Thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing that up. So um, as we all know, as HP Esmeral Unified Analytics, we bring the best of open source software together and give that end-to-end -end experience. But now what we've done is we've embedded the HP MLDE in Unified Analytics. So when you deploy Unified Analytics, a machine learning development uh, environment is available. You can, you can get started easily. You can start fine tuning the models and so on. So it's not just restricted to open source stuff anymore. That is correct. Okay, very cool. Okay, let's see the NVIDIA. Yeah, let's, uh, let's walk, uh, walk over one more time and talk about uh, the NVIDIA experience now. And, uh, and to do that. And is this the same hugging face model you used, or you want to tell us a little bit more about? Yes, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the model that we used here. Um, so this is real, we're connecting to a real environment uh, for a live demo. Um, okay, so let me clear everything out. Um, okay, so here what we've done is we have essentially brought um, um, uh, NVIDIA uh, tooling, in NVIDIA AI framework, 
and landed them on Unified Analytics. So and it's a Kubernetes app, basically. It's a Kubernetes application, so we can simply import them and, and operationalize them very, very easily. And you asked the question, Mohan, you know, did we use a different model and not a foundation model? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, for this exercise, we are using um, a 13 billion parameter model. It's a fairly large model, and it's getting the ex acceleration from GPUs. Because when you're deploying a large model, um, you need GPU power, not only to train the model, but when you're interacting with the model, you need to have that speed to get that responses fast. Right. So how many GPUs are we? Uh, right now, we are using uh, two A100s and then a couple um, uh, H100s for this okay. demo. So let me show you a very quick. It's exactly the same experience that I showed. I can simply ask a question uh, to the LLM model, and I can ask a question. Uh, let's see. You know, I'll, I'll make something up here. What is a easy presto, which Nobody should know what this is because it's a internal to HP Unified Analytics. And if I ask a question without a context, then you get to see what, what happens here, right? Now, uh, the model is, you know, responded saying that it doesn't really know, right? Because the model has never been trained on the information that tells it what Easy Presto is because it's proprietary information. It's very, you know, similar to what enterprises have, right? They have the data sets that's very proprietary and generic models would not be trained on that, right? So it responded saying that I don't know what you're talking about. Now, let me give the context and say, now go back and tell me the answer based on the private data sets that I'm gonna provide you and then let's see what the model does. So now when I ask the same question, now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back and retrieve that context from vector database that I talked about. Now it's coming back with a, with a different response. As you can see, it says that Easy Presto is a high-performance uh, query engine that runs on Esmero, right? So this is the beauty of uh, bringing HP uh, and uh, Unified Analytics, uh, having that platform that can host not only the open source tools, but also the NVIDIA AI framework to give you the powerful uh, capability to customize your LLMs and train them. And you can do rags, fine tuning, everything. It's all part and parcel. Absolutely, yeah. So, how much time will it take for you guys to build this demo? This is really cool. Yeah, I mean, you you know, you, know, you would think that uh, putting something together like this would take time, but uh, believe it or not, we actually completed the end-to-end -end demo in under two weeks. Wow. Yeah. So, so we did just take something from the web and like replicate it, or did you have to build stuff bottoms up? No, we actually brought everything bottoms up. So it took us two weeks to be able to deploy this. And, uh, and the entire demo can be stood up in, in under 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. So, and then finally, what I want to do is, um, uh, let's go to the next slide. So, so to conclude here, um, HP Unified Analytics um, uh, gives you the most uh, extensible, flexible, and a composable platform for all of your gen, uh, AI um, tooling, regardless of where you are in your journey, right? Whether you're just getting started with operationalizing uh, open foundation models, or whether you're getting a little more sophisticated and taking a generic model and fine tuning it to your needs, or you're getting started with, from, from grounds up and building your own uh, custom models from, from scratch, we give you the complete ability to do um, everything under the covers. That's very impressive, Sheik. Sheik, I know GPUs are a very like sparse commodity nowadays, yep. right? Everybody wants them, nobody has access to them. That's right. Right? That's what right. are you guys doing about it? That's a great question. Uh, I think this comes up all the time, right? We talk to our customers. Customers cannot get uh, hold of enough GPUs right now. That's because there are no GPUs to buy. Uh, everybody's scrambling for it. And oftentimes what happens is that um, uh, this, is, this is very real. We see it in our environment, data scientists grab uh, uh, GPUs. And oftentimes they are, they are sitting idle. Somebody gets, acquires them uh, and, and they're sitting idle, right? When another application, high priority workload wants GPUs, it's not available. So we've done some really cool stuff within Esmeral Unified Analytics where we can look at the idleness of GPUs and reattach those GPUs to workloads that, are, that, that have higher priority and want to have immediate access to those GPUs. So that way, we balance out the performance as well as the cost. So that sounds really cool, but what about multi-tenancy and isolation issues and stuff? Yeah, so, so the platform is multi-tenant, which means you know, we can onboard multiple users. And when users run one workload, you know, one work, uh, uh, user could be running Spark workload, doing data transformation, and uh, a data scientist could be running their machine learning pipelines, and there could be a machine learning engineer you know, uh, deploying machine learning models. Um, everybody gets to see only the operations that they are entitled to. It's fully um, access controlled. So multi-tenant access controlled, 
and innovations in GPU, and also a completely flexible, composable platform is the value of Hesperal here. Okay, you guys have been really busy. It's very, very impressive what you guys have done. Thank you. Just to imagine, six months ago, we launched the product. Yes, I, oh, I cannot believe that, you know, last year we were here on stage and talking about uh, early access to this product, and we're already in the fourth generation now. Yeah, awesome. And this chatbot, is the code available? Is it a... Yes. That, thank you, Mohan. I think you know, everything that we do here, all our tutorials, everything is on GitHub. You know, we are very transparent in how we build these demos. If anyone is interested, go to Git, uh, uh, GitHub. You can walk over to our booth. Our experts are there. They can point you to these tutorials. If you want to reproduce any of this in your environment, happy to share the code. Um, no, with that, you know, that, uh, you know, um, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for uh, listening to us. Thank and, you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you yeah. so much. Enjoy your discover. Thank you. That was a lot of technology, way more than I had expected. So, Okay, so folks, I want to wind down this session as well for a bit. And I think the big theme here was, look, we believe, like, you know, software will keep evolving. I think AI and analytics are here to stay. The use cases are going to keep getting more and more exciting, right? Our approach to basically solving this problem is really based on three tenets. The first is we believe in being hybrid by design. Antonio this morning spoke about how most enterprises end up being hybrid uh, by accident. We have very consciously for the last two years been designing systems bottoms up to be hybrid. Proof of the pudding here is when we look at our data fabric technology, for example, it, it makes it seamless for us to like, you know, work with data sets irrespective of whether they're in the cloud or they're on-prem of sorts here, right? Another big investment area for us was believing in the open source community. We were big believers of the fact that a lot of innovation is going to come out from the community, not from closed ISVs of sorts. And that's been a bet that has really paid off for us of sorts over here, right? And finally, the approach we took to future proofing was to say, we believe in an ecosystem play, right? It's not about HP to build everything for our customers, but it's really to provide standard interfaces to provide uh, standard like conventions and formats where the best of breed tools can come and partner with us. We just saw an example with Voltron data today um, with Josh, where we want to encourage more and more of the best of breed uh, technologies to come and use us as becoming their access to large enterprise customers. When we think about HP ESML software, uh, our goal, our mission is to really make, help you, our customers become more productive, help you innovate confidently anywhere and everywhere you want to, as well as, again, going back to the single cloud experience promise, do it with predictable, transparent economics of sorts here. Again, this has been, I think, one of my favorite sessions at Discover. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about any of our software capabilities or get access to our early access programs, please scan the QR code here. Thank you.